Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Robert Coho Epstein. Ukraine. Ukraine had an active civilization as an independent country when Moscow was still a forest. In the 18th and 19th centuries, parts of Ukraine were taken over by Russia and ruled by the Tsar. Ukrainian language and culture were largely suppressed. After the Russian Revolution in 1917, after a period of great chaos and confusion in which six different armies fought it out on Ukrainian soil, Ukraine became part of the Soviet Union. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, Ukraine became independent again. My grandpa, Sam, uh, came from Ukraine in 1906. Uh, he was from Berdichev, which is not too far from Kiev. And at the time, uh, the Cossacks were killing Jews whenever they could get their hands on them in what were called the pogroms. They had several groups of pogroms, which were attacks on the Jewish community. I think that uh, when um, he came and finally decided to emigrate with his brother and sister and come to the United States, they had uh, found one of their cousins drowned in a pond, as I recall. So um, he and his brother and sister came to the US and some other cousins went to Israel. Everyone who remained in Ukraine lived there until World War II. I don't know a lot about that period of time when they were uh, still there. Uh, at that time, they were all killed by the Nazis. So all the remaining family members who were still there, who hadn't emigrated, were, were killed by the Nazis. Nobody left in Ukraine, all gone. Um, a number of Ukrainians collaborated with the Nazis, but less uh, well known are the Ukrainians who did not collaborate with the Nazis. And there were quite a few of those two who, who mounted some resistance. Um, now, in our period of time, Germany has turned itself around, has thoroughly denounced Nazism, even made it illegal, which we apparently are not allowed to do in the US. And Ukraine has turned itself around and rather than persecuting Jews, they have a Jewish head of state, the only Jewish head of state outside of Israel in the entire world, possibly the only one that there ever was outside of uh, the Middle East. And um, now Russia is attacking Ukraine. This is not a new thing, but with modern weaponry, it's much more horrific um, and claiming that the Jewish administration are Nazis, but never mind about that. And targeting and killing hundreds, if not thousands at this point of civilians. Four to five million Ukrainians have been forced to flee and are refugees. My grandma Jenny, who was married to Grandpa Sam, came from Poland on the Russian border. Uh, there was always fighting in her town on the border with Russia seizing Polish land and then the Poles winning it back again. So some months Grandma Jenny was Polish and other months she was informed that she was now Russian. And then she'd go back to being Polish again. My other set of grandparents came from Galicia, which was a part of Ukraine that was taken taken over by the Austria-Hungarian Empire, the Austro-Hungarians. And um, I think it lost its name after that and is no longer called Galicia, but it was another region of Ukraine. So it turns out that everybody in my grandparents' generation in my family come from Ukraine or Russia, Poland. I took this uh, example of uh, the fighting and the killing in Ukrainian history because it's very current right now and it's personal to me. And it gives us a little portrait 
of what it's like and has been for many centuries in every region of the world here on planet Earth within samsara, the world of change and conflict. Buddha noted that the keynote characteristic of samsara was dukkha, suffering, unsatisfactoriness and discontent, discontentedness. We could also add scarcity, greed, rage and revenge not to mention the delusion that we are divided into separate groups and need to kill and steal from each other to survive. The current horror of dead, displaced, and maimed civilians goes back to the beginning of human existence. It's nothing new. Ukraine is horrendous, but other parts of the world are still currently reeling from violence or the aftermath of violence. Syrian civilians were killed in large numbers in their recent conflict. And yes, the US got out of Afghanistan, but now half the population is suffering from food deprivation. Anyone see that on the news lately? That the people that in Afghanistan are starving? Afghana who? The Rohingya have been suffering genocide since 2017 under a supposedly Buddhist administration in Myanmar. And the Chinese government is practicing genocide against the Uyghurs. Thousands of children have been abducted and conscripted as child soldiers in Sudan, Congo, and Nigeria. That hasn't been in the news lately either. And let's not forget human sex trafficking. So this gives us a view of the nature of samsara our world of delusion and separation, where dukkha, suffering, is the rule. When we look at what life is like for so many of us, not to mention illness, old age, and death for all of us, which the Buddha pointed out, it seems rather clear that the Buddha was taking a clear-eyed view of the whole entire realm of samsara and was including not only the second arrow of psycho-spiritual suffering, which I have a tendency to focus on, um, and I think others do too, who are relatively doing okay physically, but was also including our violent behavior and suffering from each other's attacks and constant warfare and constant uh, killing and harming that the human race seems to indulge in. Um, and I think he included all of that when he made his somewhat condemning statement, although also very structural, that all dhammas are dukkha. Everything in samsara has the nature of suffering and samsara as a whole is full of suffering. It doesn't seem like a really friendly place to hang out. We can't get away from samsara. We can only deal with it. As Mahayana Buddhists who have taken the Bodhisattva vows, we aspire to do the impossible and end the suffering of beings in whatever ways seem available to us. It seems to me that in addition to taking whatever actions we are capable of to help people who are suffering, which we should do to the extent that we can, there are a few internal things that we can do that correspond to our Buddhist training. One, we can follow the Buddha and have a clear eyed and complete view of the suffering taking place in our current world. It's very convenient to forget what's happening. Let's not ignore Ukraine, but let's not forget Afghanistan and Syria, Congo and Nigeria, and all the suffering people there who we are connected to, whether we know it or not. Let's feel that connection. I, I still have pictures that I'm carrying in my mind of seeing uh, things that happened in Syria with the civilian housing, you know, reduced to rubble and children in hospitals without their legs. And we don't like to deal with those things, but carrying that knowledge with us and knowing that those things are happening is part of, I think, of the Mahayana sensibility to keep those, the whole range of that in our mind. Um, and secondly, internally extend loving kindness and compassion towards those that are suffering. The energy of metta and karuna 
are not incidental, and we can include that in our meditations. By keeping those that are suffering in our awareness and extending them love, we open possibilities for both feeling and action. And finally, an even more difficult task, in the face of people causing suffering to other people, or even to ourselves at times, we should try to refrain from building up the poison of hatred and vengeance in our hearts, which just makes the world a worse place to live. And it leads to further cycles of violence. We don't want revenge. We just want to fix the problem. Remember that the Buddha welcomed the murderer Moggallana as an honored guest and in doing so was able to transform him into one of his closest disciples. Moggallana had beaten his blind parents to death, but Buddha welcomed him. And so I will end with a provocative quote from the Bodhisattva Jesus, who confused his followers and still does by saying, love your enemy. Thank you. <laughs>